I studied ballet pretty seriously when I oh, was younger. Wow. Yeah, I danced in Russia. I used to spend my summers coming to New York and like dancing at Juilliard at different summer intensives. And then I gave that up and then I somehow got into pageantry. So then I competed at Miss America. And then after that, I got into The Bachelor. And then now I'm like living in New York, working a full corporate job and like micro influencing on the side. So I feel like there's so many different facets that like led me to the point that I am now. But those are usually like the three things that a lot of people know me for. It's either like ballet pageants or The Bachelor. Oh my gosh. Well, I feel like you're so multifaceted. <laughs> Thanks. That's super cool. I feel like you've lived so many lives. Yeah. No, it, it definitely feels like that. Yeah. No, that's incredible. And how is it competing in such a enormous pageant and oh winning and like having that just experience of being in the limelight? Yeah. It, it, so like backstory, whenever I decided that I wasn't going to pursue ballet anymore, it was a really hard decision mm -hmm. um, just because I grew up training my entire life. Like I studied Russian ballet like really intensely. Um, it got to the point where at 18, I decided not to go to college. Um, I just didn't see it as an avenue for my career. Mm -hmm. I really only wanted to dance. I auditioned um, for a couple of ballet companies. I got into Orlando Ballet. I got a contract with them. And then I ended up like not signing and going to my first year of college. But the only college that I applied to was my state university because they had an amazing Russian department and ballet department. So after my first two years there, it was really hard for me to make friends because I was in ballet classes with girls a lot older than me. I was in a sorority. All the freshmen were in different classes than me in the dance department. And then um, my second year ended up injuring my back and oh. I got so burnt out from ballet. I was just like threw my hands up and I was like, we're done here. Um, so I didn't know like what to do with my time and I didn't know how to make friends. So I found this miracle organization. I was like, okay, like I'm going to pursue college now. I didn't really mentally prepare for what student loans look like after college. I was already $25,000 in debt and the Miss America program and Miss South Carolina in general gave out $40,000 in scholarships. So I was like, okay, this is a way for me to make friends. It's a way for me to keep dancing because they have a talent competition. And I was like, I've watched Miss America before. I was like, my talent's going to be, yeah. this is going to be pretty good. And then, <laughs> um, I kind of went into it like with a little bit of a chip on my shoulder, but then also I like was severely humbled. Like I had no clue what I was doing my first year. I actually looked like a teenager. I was 20 and everybody thought I was competing in the teen competition. And no I was way. like, no, I'm a miss, but it was one of the best experience of my life. I, I think my first year I won a talent award and then I placed top 10 and then I just like have this grit in me that if I have my mind set to something, I'll do like anything in my path to like work really hard for mm -hmm. it. So I think that entire next year, all I focused on was preparing for Miss South Carolina and I was able to win. And to this day, a lot of the girls that I met at Miss America um, are still some of my best friends. Like, Aww. and a lot of them live here in New York too. So it's been really nice. Like getting to see all the girls again and then also be friends, but also work together in a professional light too. So it was fun. I think competing in Miss America and then also like uh, in the pre-professional ballet world, like there's a lot of competition there. Like girls can get really mean. You never know how to like fully open yourself up and be vulnerable with someone because everybody's your competition. Right. But I think through competing at Miss America, like I developed so many close relationships. It allowed me to like trust people a little bit more. Um, and yeah, it was like a really intense year. I learned a lot about myself. I'm really glad I did it, but I also think it stripped away a lot of my college experience because I was 21. Like I wasn't allowed to go out. I wasn't allowed to drink. Like I wasn't allowed to party. And so my college experience because of dancing and because of Miss America is like very different than a lot of other people. But still to this day, like I wouldn't be like graduating, uh, graduated debt free without it. So yeah, I'm really happy for all of it. That's incredible. Yeah. I feel like it's super interesting that you were able to have that experience at such a young age. Yeah. And I think it definitely teaches you so much confidence and I'm sure self-awareness. But it's crazy because I didn't know much about the ballet world. And yeah. I've had on guests that have been professional ballerinas and it's just so wild. The mental, emotional, physical. Yeah just repercussions that it puts on you and your body mm -hmm. and 
it's such an athleticism that I think some people don't understand. And yeah. there's so many injuries and it's just wild what what you can do. And I'm so glad that, you know, it wasn't wasn't worse. And yeah, I'm, I'm sure like recovering from that injury was like really tough, though. Oh, it was. It, yeah. So like basically we were doing a lift where he like puts me above the man puts me above his head. And then he like basically throws me in the air, does a little pop, and then I do a spin in the air, and then he catches me, <sighs> and I just like really tweaked my back. But at that point, like you said, there's so much like mental and emotional fatigue that goes through like trying to get a career in professional ballet, like, and especially going from ballet to pageants. I went from one arena where your entire life and your career is focused on like your ability, your success, but then also it's like how you look and like how you, your success is defined by like your talent, how you look, how skinny you are and like appraisal of other people. And I went right into an industry where it does the exact same. So my worth was also identified in like, do people think I'm smart enough? Do right. they think I'm pretty enough? Can I walk good in a swimsuit? And so I think like giving all of that up and actually like taking time to like mentally, like, I don't know, address like all of the physical harm that ballet had put on my body for years and then the mental harm that both like ballet and pageantry have put on my body over the years was really important for me like after all of those years um because I do think like growing up in those environments and a lot of girls in the south do it going from like ballet dance to pageants right. where you're just like taught that like your worth is defined by other people and your worth is defined by how you look and like what like food is on your plate and what you consume that it it gets like really tough and it, that is what triggered so in um when I was in Russia I remember specifically getting told that as a 17 year old if you didn't weigh it was something crazy like under 110 pounds like you weren't allowed to like partner with boys because you have to you have to be small enough for them to lift you and I remember like since then like that whenever I came back like it indoctrinated in me like a really bad like eating disorder and I yeah. felt like I wasn't worth anything if I wasn't a certain size and then going through pageants I really tried to not fall into that again but still like you have to cut your body to be the leanest that you can for a bikini right. because you want to look good and you want to feel good and I think my first year I really did it in an unhealthy way I sought out the advice from like trainers who were not pushing me to live a healthy lifestyle mm -hmm. they're just pushing me to like cut as much weight and fat right. as I can yeah, calorie deficit and yeah. just all of the jargon that you hear I'm oh sure. I had um a trainer told me if I needed a snack during the South Carolina week I can eat ice chips and if I'm really tired I can take a scoop of honey I was like at that point I was like what also just like he the amount of calories I was supposed to be burning like what I can consume it was actually ridiculous and so like that's I'm always get so nervous like trusting advice from other trainers because there's a lot of bad trainers out there and there's oh. a lot of bad nutrition advice out there there's just a lot of bad experts out yeah. there people that claim to be experts in anything mm -hmm. and yeah you have to take everything with a grain of salt and yeah. it's sad that people have these positions and they don't use it for the better good they exactly. kind of use it to probably just get results in a very unhealthy way and that just I guess looks good on their behalf yeah. I don't know I just I can't understand or wrap my mind around why people would give people just really toxic advice like that yeah but it's just like young impressionable girls uh, yeah like, it's always it's always that and that's I think what frustrates me the most about you know those yeah. situations yeah, but after going through that, so I have like an autoimmune disease. So that's what really got me into oh like gosh. health and wellness, yeah. not only for like what, how my body looks, but how it functions. And so like going through that stress on my body triggered the start of it. And so after I competed at Miss America, I remember like waking up and I was so depressed, like fatigued. I couldn't get out of bed. I was like gaining weight really rapidly. And everyone was telling me that, oh, like, you're just sad. Like, you didn't do as well in Miss America as you wanted to. Like, this is so normal. And I was, like, petrified of, like, going from my stage-ready body to, like, being a normal person again. Um, and whenever it was happening super suddenly, it really made me scared. And I felt like I couldn't control my body anymore. Um, and so I, I remember putting on a pair of pants that I wore to Miss America. And it was three weeks later for my little sister's birthday. And I literally couldn't button them. And I was like, what is happening? I gained 15 pounds in three weeks. I was like, something's off. I ended up like going to the doctor, getting a ton of test runs. And that's when I found out that I had my autoimmune disease. So going from someone who like 
struggle with an eating disorder, like put a lot of pressure on like what my body looks like and not necessarily how my body functions. Like that was the switch in my life where it really like led me to have a healthy lifestyle, just not because like I want it for aesthetics, but because my body needs it. And if I want to feel my body, if I want to feel my best, like if I want to like actually function like a normal human mm-hmm. being like I have to treat it with such care and For so sure. that's where like all of my my health and wellness goody lifestyle came from I love that I feel like once you are exposed to the health and wellness scene yeah you just feel so invigorated mm-hmm. and it's just like an epiphany moment where I know. you start to feel good you start to look good and you start to treat people like so much energetically different I feel like you know because I think when you truly feel so good from the inside out then that starts to project onto other people in a really healthy positive way so I think that's obviously it's like horrible what you had to go through and it's interesting because I always say that people that do get into the health and wellness scene there is some story to that and I feel like it just makes the most interesting people because you have been at this really low point and you're able to rise above and really conquer your own just negative thought patterns and limiting beliefs and push forward. And it's a great community. So I'm glad that you found it. 